Um, day 107 classwork review. What happens to the temperature of the air when you go up the first 10 miles? What happens? What happens? What do you think? Go ahead, James. It gets colder. It gets colder. That's right. Temperature drops about 80 degrees from the surface to the top of the troposphere. Why does the temperature change as you go up the first 10 miles? Is it because you get closer to the sun? Ozone warms the air. There's no ozone to warm things up. There's nothing blocking direct sunlight, or you're getting farther from the warm ground. Hmm, think about it. Chiara, which one do you think? Um, e. The answer is E. You get farther from the warm ground. Sunlight hits the ground, warms it up, and then that warms up the air. And so as you get farther and farther away from that warm source, you get colder and colder air. Why is the stratosphere, the second layer, warmer than the troposphere? So it gets colder and colder and colder as you go up, but then it starts to get warmer. Why? Is it because, well, it's the same set of options. Yes, see? What do you think, James? Uh, there's, uh, more the sun. Um, that's not one of the options here. Yes, yeah, seen? Uh, the, the ozone warms things up. Yes, the stratosphere has ozone, and that um, captures sunlight and warms up the air. Number four, why is the mesosphere, the third layer, colder? Same options. So we know it's not going to be option B. That's been used up already. And we know it's not E because that's been used up already. Yeah. Alex, which one? <laughs> the correct answer is the mesosphere. C, there's no ozone to warm things up, so it gets cold again. Number five, why is the top layer the hottest? Well, we know it's not B, we know it's not E, and now we know it's not C. Those have been used up, so therefore, E, GADS. Sorry, it's a little bit different because this has five options, this one only has four. I thought they were the exact same set. It's either A or C, and I've kind of given it away already. It's C. There's nothing above you blocking the direct sunlight, so the top layer gets very, very hot, about 1,800 degrees Celsius. Most weather occurs in which layers? When I mean weather, I mean clouds and rain and snow and all that kind of stuff. Where does that occur? Is it just the bottom layer, the bottom three layers, just the top two layers, or just simply the top layer? Well, we experience all sorts of weather down here on the ground, so obviously it's not just the top layer, and it's not just the top two layers, because we here at the bottom layer have it. So is it only the bottom layer, or is it the bottom three layers? Uh, let's see here. Enrique, what do you think? Um, A. A is the correct answer. Why do meteors burn up as shooting stars? Is it because of compression and air friction, or is it because of chemical reactions? Um, let's see here. Stephanie. Um, it's going to be A. A, air friction mainly, and compressing air. We learned about air friction in the video. Compressing air was in your activity yesterday. The stratosphere contains what that absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays? Angie. B. B, the correct answer is C, ozone. Ozone is three molecules, uh, three atoms of oxygen hooked together. Okay, here we have the exact same complicated graph that we had yesterday. We're just going to analyze it a little bit differently. What layers might be measured to have a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit? So Fahrenheit temperatures are on the top. 
So we need to find the zero. Where would the zero mark be on the axis there? You should be thinking about that spot right about there. So as we go down the graph, we have the zero on that part of the line and on that part of the line and there. Three times the atmosphere can have zero Fahrenheit. That's going to be in the troposphere, stratosphere, and mesosphere. All three of those get circled. The next question is the exact same thing, so let's change this Fahrenheit to be Celsius. So here we have the Celsius temperatures and right there is the zero. So how many layers have zero Celsius? It's only the troposphere. Which would have greater cooling? 10 kilometers going up in the troposphere or 10 in the mesosphere? As we go from zero to 10 in the troposphere, we start off at the zero with a temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius, about, almost. By the time we rise up to 10 miles, it's about negative 50. That's a difference of minus 70. Going from the ground up to here is a drop of 70 degrees. Going up 10 kilometers in the mesosphere, well, let's just take from, uh, from 60 to 70 kilometers. At 60 kilometers, it's about negative 20 degrees Celsius. At 70 degrees, sorry, 70 kilometers up, it's about negative 50. Negative 20 to negative 50 is a negative 30 drop. So the bigger cooling, the greater cooling is going to be in the troposphere. There have been high school students in real life who have built balloons that have gone to the edge of space and taken pictures. You can see them on the web. What would you have? Would you want the camera to withstand very high temperatures or very low temperatures to do that? The edge of space is actually considered to be at about 60 miles up. Now, actually, to tell you the truth, I forget if it's 60 miles or 60 kilometers. Um, but anyway, let's say it's 60 miles. The answer here doesn't get affected. So at that, at that altitude, the temperature is like negative 76 Fahrenheit. And so that's very cold temperatures that you want to have the camera withstand. OK, now with the air project. Um, this is going to be a, a lesson in reading directions.